Hi there YouTube, this is the Magnus bringing you another Total War Warhammer online ladder battle. Uh, this time my opponent chose the dwarfs and I decided to give Chaos a spin. And speaking of a spin, I decided to bring a Gore Beast Chariot to see what I could do. Uh, I have seven of the Chaos Warriors with great weapons, one Hell Cannon, one Forsaken, one Exalted Hero on his flying mount, and one Chaos Lord on a Chaos Dragon. My opponent chose to go with a long line of long beards, six pun intended or bird play intended I should say. He's got three of the quarrelers, one grudge thrower, two slayers out on the flanks, and in the rear he has one unit of dwarf warriors. So of course I'm going to start off with the hell cannon firing into his line and he's going to fire off the grudge thrower. Now obviously the hell cannon overall is a more expensive and therefore probably better artillery unit but we'll have to see how it does. Uh, I push forward with my infantry immediately and since I don't have cavalry I decide to use my chariot as a flanking force to work its way up here and my flyers as well. Now initially this doesn't really need to be done like I could, could push out later but I like to do it because it gets my opponent thinking and gets him moving things around and trying to adjust. And I find if he's reacting to me, then my opponent's much less likely to act. So it, I feel it gives me initiative. So I love to do this sort of thing. And the infantry here, you'll notice I went with all great weapons, and that's because the dwarfs all have great armor. And I decided to try the chariot, which everybody says chariots suck. And in a lot of circumstances, that is true. But I wanted to find out, hey, these guys are armored, piercing, anti-infantry. And that's all there is on the field is armored infantry, except for the slayers. So could the Gorby, could, in this circumstance, could the Gorby's chariot be useful? Now, I accidentally get my Forsaken out in front of my guys, uh, which means they're going to get slaughtered. But to be honest, if I'm going to get a unit slaughtered, I'd rather it be them than my great weapons. Uh, these guys are quick, and that's their advantage. But uh, yeah, not good against the missiles. But they will get into the line and do some damage here. Uh, they're going to take the, the brunt of the enemy's movements. So I'm waiting for the infantry to be completely engaged before I push in with either the chariot or the flying units. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, with the Chaos Lord on his uh, dragon here is get into his quarrelers. Because quarrelers are not good when you have no shields. You definitely want to deal with them. And I try to go after his runesmith. Now here you're going to see my Gore, Gore Beast Chariot go after the Slayers here because they are terrible at taking charge of this, taking this amount of damage. And from there I can push into his lines. And you can see there's there's a lot of rune of oath and steel and things going on here. But the, the, the lack of mass is really going to let the Gore Beasts go through and really put a hurting on several units. So now they're into the Grudge Throwers. They've already lost the vast majority of their health and men. Uh, or dwarfs rather. The infantry engagement's pretty standard except for I had a little extra that I pushed out the flank to get a nice round so that the right flank would be in my favor and I felt like the left flank would be just because the gore, the gore gore chariot or beast chariot is going to be back here having a field day. So you'll notice I spend most of my time cycle charging him through the various units uh, and to, to good effect I would say. Now I pull out my uh, Chaos Lord here because he was getting a little beat up and the Exalted Hero had just been beat up. But I'm going to cycle them right back into combat. Uh, and you're going to see I decide to target the left flank to kind of get some weakness going there. Using the uh, Hell Cannon to chase off uh, his missile units. And the Gorby's Chariots are still just riding right through the door from lines. They've got different guys chasing them, coming after them. I mean, just, just look at that penetration as they plow through the dwarf in infantry lines. Now, killing them is great. Obviously, that's the primary focus. But when you knock units over, which the dwarfs are very susceptible to, remember, a guy on the ground isn't swinging. So you're essentially changing the dynamic of the battle by you having more men that are actually in these fights. And not to mention, just when you can use a chariot, right, it is so much fun to play. So you can see I'm just going back and forth with these guys, steering them around the field. Now at the same time, I am changing targets for like the Chaos uh, Dragon here, my lord. Uh, but you know, just not nothing uh, to me as entertaining as watching these guys just rip through. And you'll notice it's not a passive chariot. The, the people that are, the, the beasts that are carrying it actually do melee combat. So you're going to see them just, just pounding on these guys back there. 
Uh, here, you see my flying units coming in to, to put more damage and more disruption into the dwarf lines. Uh, right now, they're, they're targeting uh, Unger Myronfist to try to get him off the field because I feel I've had enough success elsewhere uh, that finishing him would, would be either finish the fight or be darn close to it. So I did lose one of my Gorby's chariots, but they're at 109 kills. So I, I, I certainly think they've earned their their keep. And uh, they've also added two chevrons uh, in the course of this battle. Here they're going to get into the again. It doesn't matter if you're braced when you got a bow out and you're up a, a little dwarf against these monstrous machines. And they're just, just having a field day out there. And, you know, this sort of thing, like, if I would have brought, like, four chariots or whatever, I probably would have failed horribly. So when you're going to get creative, and you're going to bring a unit that's fun, you just bring one and play with it, you know, and you'd be surprised what you can get away with. I've, I've gotten away with playing a lot of units that other people say, well, never play this. Heck, even units I say never play, if you play them right and in the right situation, uh, they can be very powerful. So Ungram's fighting down the last, but he's got, you know, he's Chaos Warriors with great weapons, and he has the Chaos Lord on his giant dragon. It's too much, he gets eaten, and the rest decide they've had enough of playing with Chaos today. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Uh, obviously the Forsaken being placed out there as meat was not a good thing. I brought, on second thought, I probably should have just brought Marauders with shields and ranked them up for that. It was kind of silly on my part. Uh, definitely my mistake of the battle. Uh, the Chaos Lord did well, so did the Exalted Hero. The Lord more so because he has the Potion of Toughness. The Exalted Hero, as far as I understand, is the only melee uh, hero unit that doesn't have access to potions. It's ridiculous. And that's one of the things that makes Chaos uh, underpowered. Uh, the Chaos Warriors with great weapons did, did great work. I mean, they are equipped for cutting through heavy armor, and that's what they were presented with against the dwarves. The Gore Beast Chariot, two chevrons, 134 kills, and only lost one of their guys. They could have went on for quite some more time. And the Hell Cannon got a chevron and got 73 kills, which is quite good. Now let's see how um, our opponent did. His long beards were completely outmatched by the Chaos Warriors, no question about it. Even with the Runesmith and his buffs helping them out, it just wasn't enough. His leader and heroes did fine. Uh, not great, not good, but okay. Uh, his Quarrelers were undermined right from the start, so was the Grudge Thrower, and the Slayers definitely did not live up to their expectation. Uh, as you know, the only large I had on the field were my two, uh, my Lord and my Hero, and the Gorby's Chariot, and they were not a good match for either. Uh, so overall, good game to my opponent. What what would I do differently here? I feel like if you're going to go up against Chaos, you know they're going to have the great weapons, but you also know we have high armor as well, and I think great weapons would have gone a long way to helping him be more competitive in the match. And I also think Thunderers would be far better than Quarrelers because they can punch through this armor. Now, if he was expecting me to bring Forsaken, which a lot of people do, then you know this build is kind of understandable. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the fight. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. Until the next time, this is the Magnus. Thanks and take care.